Hey everyone, it's Rachel from Sugar Maple Farmhouse and today I want to show you a hot dog bar setup and a couple DIYs that I did to go with this. All right, so to start off, here is our hot dog bar space. This is a space right outside our farm stand. Right now our farm stand has nothing in it because we have no vegetables and our flowers, you can see them, they're just coming up there in front of it. That is the Cosmos and the Zinnias. And this is the space where we set up the hot dog bar. We put two picnic tables here this year, so if people wanna come by, I'm hoping that I will have lemonade here on the weekends that people can come by and they can just sit as they purchase our vegetables and flowers when they're in season. But right now I'm using it as the hot dog bar. So I promise I will show you all the details of this space, but there's first a couple DIYs within it that I want to show you too. And I apologize if right now I'm sounding stuffy, I've had a head cold for the last couple of days and I've been fighting it off, but I can't wait to show you all of these fun details in the space and the DIYs that I've included. Before we get started, I would love if you guys subscribe to our channel, if you're not a subscriber yet, and if you are a subscriber, thank you so much for being here. Okay, so the first DIY is this banner right here. I made this because I bought one last year from Pottery Barn that looked similar, and I wanted more this year, but I didn't want to buy more. You can see the Pottery Barn banner right here on their website. It's about $30, so I didn't want to spend another $60 on two additional banners, which is what I wanted at the beginning of the season. So that you guys can see a comparison, here is the Pottery Barn banner on the top and my banner on the bottom. My banner is about half the size of the Pottery Barn banner. Perhaps I could have found a larger flag banner if I had kept looking, but I ordered kind of the first thing I saw and I'm actually happier with the smaller size. I think it works for what I need it for and in the future if I want to get a bigger banner, I'll just have to look around a little more. I will leave the link for you to the banner that I made in the description below. All right, so this was actually one of the easiest DIY projects that I have ever done. I started with my banner, as you can see here, and then I used blue tape to make the lines on the banner itself. So I laid four pieces. I wanted the parts that were not red to feel kind of bulky enough, just like the Pottery Barn banner, and I also still wanted to have a significant portion of red to represent the stripes on the flag. Once I had the tape positioned where I wanted it, I went ahead and painted the flags with a sponge brush. I love using sponge brushes for this because they are cheap and they work really well. I used a paint sample that I had. I purchased a few paint samples earlier in this season so I could make some signs for our farm stand and it just so happened that I purchased red and blue. So this color is called Firecracker. It is from Bare Paint and it is just their little paint sample in a satin finish. My flag banners have 15 flags on them and they cost $7 each. So the Pottery Barn flags have seven flags on them just for comparison purposes and they cost $30 each. The stars I printed or I cut off of stencil paper on my Cricut. Now, if you don't have a Cricut, you can still do this craft. You can use star stickers that you find or you can buy the Avery sticker paper and print them and cut them. I think it would probably be easiest to find star stickers just because I think using the Avery sticker printer paper would be difficult to kind of cut out all the little stars and I think that it could get really tedious. So if you don't have a Cricut, I would recommend finding star stickers to use for this part. If you do have a Cricut, in the blog post, which I will put a link to in the description below, I will have a link to the size stars that I used on my banners. So you can go to the blog post and you can click that and you can get my template for these. 
Now if you do buy a banner and it's a larger size banner, keep in mind it'll look a little bit different. I think even if I had a larger size banner, I would probably still use the same size star. But just so you guys know, I want to be transparent that this is kind of made for this size banner that I purchased. And again, I'll leave a link to the banner in the description below. Once I had the stars placed where I wanted them, I again went in and used that sponge brush to paint. You can see I'm kind of dabbing here. I think that's the best way to go when you're working with stencils or when you're working with, if you're going to use star stickers, something like that. So the dabbing method I really recommend when you're doing anything where you want the pattern to come out. Again here I used a bare paint sample and the color is called English Channel. I let my flags dry overnight. I went in and I touched them up a little bit more that evening, but they really didn't need much because I made sure when I went through and did my first coat, I gave them a good kind of heaping of paint. But I did let them dry overnight. If you are in a rush, you can always let these dry for a few hours. They should be okay. I am gonna recommend though leaving them overnight if you have the time and the space. I was able to reuse some of my star stencils again on additional flags. If you use star stickers that you find, I don't know that you'll be able to do that, so keep that in mind when you're purchasing them. With the stencils though, some of them worked for me to reuse and some of them tore apart, but most of them were reusable, which was helpful. And here are the completed banners hanging with my hot dog bar. The next DIY I'm going to show you is this sign. So I've been working on making some custom signs this summer and this build your own hot dogs was the first large scale sign that I made. So again here, I used my Cricut to make custom stencils. This video is not sponsored. It just so happens that I use the Cricut a lot for these particular projects. I really wanted to make something that was a custom stencil that would last, but I wasn't able to find a material to work on that I could use again and again. The Cricut stencil paper did not work for me. What I did end up using to make these was a foil cardstock paper. So I was able to print just one letter per sheet of paper. So this is thicker and it held up really well. And then I didn't feel as awful about throwing them away. I did order really large stencils to use in the future because I don't want to have to do this every single time. And I'll leave a link to those in the description below if you guys want to order those too. If you don't have a Cricut, I think that would be the easiest way to go to make a large sign like this. So once I had all my stencils printed, I went and I laid them out. If I were going to do this again, I would probably do this part a little bit differently and use a leveler. I tend to eyeball stuff because I'm impatient, but I really think using a leveler would be helpful here. If you have one, I would suggest you use it. If you don't, or if you are also impatient and you want to try eyeballing it like I did, go for it. I think it turned out pretty well, uh, but I would probably just in the future again use do it a little bit differently it's kind of like the measure twice cut once philosophy there also if you do want to make a large sign like this but you don't necessarily have the saw to cut something like this they do have wood at home depot that is called project wood in fact that's what this is i bought this in this size from the project wood section which kevin was not too pleased about because we do have the saws and obviously they upcharge you a little bit because it's already cut but it is what it is and i'm glad i got the size that i wanted once I had everything laid out how I wanted it, I started painting it with a stencil brush this time. I decided to use a stencil brush just because I wanted to be a little more precise and I wanted to make sure that I was covering enough space. I did have to tape down the insides of the letters, so I thought that using the sponge brush might just make a little too much paint get into the space and I wanted to be more exact with this sign. 
This time I am using a chalk paint here. This is called Coastal Blue, and I will leave a link to it in the description for you below. The background of the sign is chalk paint also. It is called Chiffon Cream, and again, I'll leave a link to it in the description below for you. I use the chiffon cream on the vintage DIY flower pots that I made and put up last week. I'll leave a link to those also in the description below and then I'll pop something up here on screen so you can go to that if you wanna see it. This project in total probably cost me about $30. I did have to buy the board, I bought the foil cardstock for the stencils, and then I also had to buy the paint. So the blue paint I bought, I'm not counting the white paint because I bought that technically for another project, but if you add it all up, it probably cost me $30. However, I am planning on using this blue paint and the white paint for more farm signs in the future, so I don't feel as bad about the cost of that. I'm also gonna flip this sign over and I'm going to use the back of it for a farm stand sign too. So again, I'm just making it do double duty and I don't feel as bad about the cost. Even if you do not have a farm stand, keep in mind that you can always reuse the backs of these two so that you can actually put two different signs on each side if you wanna do one for Christmas or one for Halloween, however you wanna do it. But there is that option when you buy something like this, which I frankly love. Here is the reveal of the sign. I had a little bit of bleed over, but nothing too bad, so the cardstock foil paper worked really, really well. In some places where I did have some bleed over, I just went back in with a sponge brush and I touched it up with the white paint. Here's the sign again, all completed with the hot dog bar. The last DIY for this space are the centerpieces on the picnic tables. These were super simple, it's not rocket science, but I will show you what I did anyways. They're basically painted mason jars. I had some grander plans for this and they did not work out, so this was kind of a backup option. But here's how I did this anyways. Again, using a sponge brush and that same paint color that I used on the flag banner, I went in and I painted some smooth side mason jars. So originally my plan was to use those stars that I used on the banner as well and make kind of star cutouts on these with the paint. However, when I tried it, the stars ended up ripping off a bunch of the paint. Again, the paint is a bare paint sample, so maybe if I used a glass paint, it would have worked out better. But as a simple tablescape centerpiece option, I think this works out really well too. The red is also the same red that I used on the banner, so at least I got double the work out of the paint. I also did try using the painter's tape on the red ones to try to make stripes, but again, it just didn't work. It just kept pulling off the paint and they kind of looked shabby. This is when you can actually see I'm doing a second coat on it that had the stars on it and I'm just going over it and filling in all the places where they were. These did take three to four coats of paint to get them to cover properly. This red one that I'm working on here is one of the ones that had the painter's tape on it to try to make the stripes. You can tell it's kind of chunky where the stripes had been and I'm just going over it. They turned out okay once everything dried, so I don't think there was any big issues with going back and needing to get the rest of the paint off. It all ended up working out fine. All right, so now let's talk about some of those hot dog bar details. First, if you're gonna do something like this, I think chafing dishes for the hot dogs are a great idea. We didn't have the flame out yet because we weren't needing it yet, people weren't over, but they are a great idea if you wanna keep the hot dogs warm. Also, I used a bunch of little jars for the condiments, including baked beans, coleslaw, and chili. And people could either eat the chili, baked beans, and coleslaw as a side, or they could use it to top their hot dogs. 
I thought all these containers were really just perfect for serving. If you're going to serve anything on a buffet, it just really helps to have a lot of little containers around. And these ones were great for outside too because they all came with covers. So whether you're serving things inside or outside, I would definitely recommend these. I will leave links to them also in the description below. It's going to be a link heavy description below today. However, I would 100% buy these little jars again. I think if you like to host, these are just invaluable pieces that you can have to serve with. For my hot dog bar, I had cheese, tomatoes, relish, sauerkraut, cucumbers, and banana peppers in these little jars. And then in the jars below, I had sauces. So in this one, I have mustard, I have ketchup, and I have a spicy mustard. On the other side, I have a cucumber tzatziki sauce, which I thought was a fun topping. I have a barbecue sauce, and then I have a Dijon mustard. The little spoons for these are great, and once they're in use, you can just go ahead and leave them in the jars. They have a little slot for the spoon to stick out. That way you don't get a mess all over the wood. Here's a look at all the fun topping options all together. This really made for a great setup that was fun to look at and easy to use. I also used a tiered serving tray for chips, corn on the cob, and cookies. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope that you like the hot dog bar setup and all of the DIYs that I did with it. And I hope that it inspires you, whether you're having company over for the weekend, next weekend, or whether you wanna to put together some DIYs on your own with things you can decorate your table with, make your own signage, or make your own banners. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below. And as always, I'll have a full blog post up on each of these things at sugarmaplefarmhouse.com. And please remember to subscribe to our channel before you go so that you can follow along with everything we're doing here at Sugar Maple Farmhouse. Thanks so much everyone, have a great day.